All right, peeps. Uh, promised a video to someone in the past about the oil pump and how to clean the strainer on it and all that rubbish. So yeah, the side cover has to be removed, of course, the uh, generator side. Again, uh, if you don't know how to get here to this point, stop this video now, go and watch uh, any of the tutorials on YouTube because there's plenty about how to um, remove the alternator side or generator side uh, cover including the, the Bendix levers and whatnot, the starter clutch, you know, the starter gears, the fork, all that stuff. Uh, I'd like to concentrate on this item and this item only. So this here is the oil pump behind that. It has a small sprocket and the flimsy tiny tiny chain. Usually there's not much problem with this chain, you know, the, um, of course it can break and snap but it's not something that I see often uh, unless the pump gets seized of course which we want to avoid and that is part of the the exercise we do today so yeah tiny chain sprocket and the cover over the whole thing so we are going to start with the cover it has two Allen screws or bolts rather six millimeter uh, and it uh, comes off with a, a five millimeter Allen key so the thread is M6 they are fairly small and here comes the cover it's just a sheet metal cover nothing fancy and as you can see we have a sprocket the chain is fairly loose, that is fine, that is how it should be. So I take oh come on. Start uh, unscrewing it uh, suddenly because if you just apply a constant torque uh, gently, so it's not jerking, you're going to turn the, the flywheel with the chain and that's not really what you want to achieve here so yeah let's carry on that's uh all you need is a 10 millimeter socket for this and presto the sprocket is out it's tiny it's thin but remember all it does is a operates the fuel pump so it does not have to transfer a huge amount of torque we get the chain out of the way we have this magnet here that was designed to trap the metal shavings from the starter here as you can see it's black so that magnet can uh, help us keeping the chain to one side and now we can <sighs> undo these allen bolts try to remember which goes where I don't remember if they are different sized or not so yeah take pictures or something that looks about the same so that's cool and let's get rid of the third one. There we go. Come on, you slippery bastard. So, the third one. Yep, same size, so no need to worry. And as you can see, the oil pump is loose. Now, to get it out, you just grab it and gently start lifting that thing up and wiggle it a little bit and as you can see it's already out we just have to get it over this paper gasket which I'm going to cut because that's not a crucial part and I have to fit a new gasket there anyway so yeah there we go eh. 
Come on. Needs a bit of wiggling because... Uh, Come on, wiggle yourself out, please. So yeah, it's a little bit tricky, but it should come out. Okay, so the thing is that uh, I made a mistake. The last time I did this, uh, or I had to do this, it was the first gen, um, a 750 from 82 or something. Now with those ones, this thing comes out nicely because the strainer that uh, we're jamming on the inside, the strainer part is much smaller on the first gens, so it, it can come out. With the second gen, you also have to undo this no actually we have to remove this completely as far as I can see yes so we have to dismantle the pump which is a bit more labor-intensive as you can see and you expose the moving bits inside the pump uh, Right, let's, let's put this down here. So we have this bit, the inner rotor and the outer rotor. This is called the trochoid pump. Basically the gap between the, the inner star, shall we say, and the outer star is changing constantly. You have this rotating bit with the little shaft. It has a little pinhole. That's where the axle, or the uh, pin, sorry goes through and that drives the inner star here which has that notch cut in it so I'm going to align this with this and I pop it back together because we don't want to do anything on the inside of course I need to take this apart again when we reassemble it but uh, let's show you how it's how it has to be cleaned so put the, the screw back for the time being the reason why we do this is because sometimes the strainer the oil pickup actually can get clogged up especially if you have an older bike or if uh, the previous owners did not uh, uh, change the oil in time sometimes or for example, someone used silicon um, sealing material, RTV, on the engine. Now, if anything like that gets trapped in here, in the strainer, that can uh, slowly start restricting the flow. So, of course, if that gasket material is breaking down, it ends up in here and slowly starts blocking up this area and you won't be able to, well, the pump won't be able to uh, lubricate the top end and the, the crankshaft uh, the main galleries and all the other bits that need oiling now uh, with this one this is the the pickup that's the strainer and it's just a sheet metal cover that can be pried off that's off that is the the pickup that's where the oil enters the pump and this is the strainer. As you can see, I don't have too much rubbish down there, but you may never know. And that's why you have to check every once in a while. If I look in there, I see something, and I can definitely see something poking through the mesh. And as far as I can tell, those are bloody metal shavings. Well, the point is that the strainer caught those little metal bits which I'm going to get out somehow. So yeah, I'm going to spray some uh, brake cleaner on here and I'm going to move the screwdriver behind that to get the rubbish out 
uh, to make sure it's clean behind the mesh and once that's done you can pop the sheet metal back on the pickup of course if you see anything uh, nasty in here clean it and then everything's the reverse so in order to put this back you might have to take this out again um, put this thing back in place then of course align the little shaft with the cross pin and the rotor inside the pump uh, put the the allen bolts back all three of them as you can see it has little red o-rings inside the engine uh, make sure they are seated nicely and that they are soft and they are someone might have done something about this at some point in the past not too long ago because my gaskets seem to be in pretty good condition regardless uh, so you put this back put the bolts back and then you align the sprocket the chain and basically put everything back together so that would be it that is what I usually recommend if you find things in the oil when you change it like uh, silicon gasket uh, bits that might have uh, torn off because one of the previous owners was uh, an idiot um, when they applied the silicon uh, some people think that the thicker they go the, the better it is um, because it is going to seal better which is bullshit regardless if you find things like that anyway it is worth checking out because you definitely don't want this pickup to clog up because if it's clogged nothing will be lubricated and you're going to wear your engine out rather quickly